Title, Demand and Supply in Financial Markets In the demand and supply analysis of financial markets, the price is the rate of return or the interest rate received. We measure the quantity by the money that flows from those who supply financial capital to those who demand it. Two factors can shift the supply of financial capital to a certain investment, if people want to alter their existing levels of consumption, and if the riskiness or return on one investment changes relative to other investments. Demand and supply for borrowing money with credit cards, in this market for credit card borrowing, the demand curve, D, for borrowing financial capital intersects the supply curve, S, for lending financial capital at equilibrium E. At the equilibrium, the interest rate, the price in this market, is 15% and the quantity of financial capital loaned and borrowed is $600 billion. The equilibrium price is where the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied are equal. At an above equilibrium interest rate like 21%, the quantity of financial capital supplied would increase to $750 billion but the quantity demanded would decrease to $480 billion. At a below equilibrium interest rate like 13%, the quantity of financial capital demanded would increase to $700 billion, but the quantity of financial capital supplied would decrease to $510 billion. Shifts in demand and supply in financial markets those who supply financial capital face two broad decisions, how much to save, and how to divide up their savings among different forms of financial investments. Participants in financial markets must decide when they prefer to consume goods, now or in the future. Economists call this intertemporal decision-making because it involves decisions across time. Unlike a decision about what to buy from the grocery store, people make investment or savings decisions across a period of time, sometimes a long period. Most workers save for retirement because their income in the present is greater than their needs, while the opposite will be true once they retire. Thus, they save today and supply financial markets. If their income increases, they save more. If their perceived situation in the future changes, they change the amount of their saving. In a modern, developed economies, financial capital often moves invisibly through electronic transfers between bank accounts. Yet we can analyze these flows of funds with the same tools of demand and supply as markets for goods or labor.